This video will contain spoilers. Uh, turns out that my granny got me a gift for Christmas. But I, well, I knew of it at the time and I completely forgot about it until now because uh, I've run out of tablets. Because I take tablets for everybody, I take tablets for acid reflux and uh, they came in today and dad was like, oh, what are those tablets for? Because he, he wants to know everything. Because he's, you know, fucker like that. Um, so I said, you know, hey fever. Wait a second, so like, you granny got you an air freshener for Christmas? And then I remember now. I thought what had happened was that she gave me the one that she had. Because she had this tiny one that just sat on the radiator. And instead of it being used as an air freshener, she used it as... You basically put the you know put the radiator on and turn that on so that the hot air, it becomes like hot air and gets blown in her direction. But that thing was fucking useless. I'm gonna give this a try. But I'm remaining skeptical. It's actually on right now on the lowest setting. I don't. I can hear it now that I'm like trying to hear it, but it's like when. PS5 overheats, like, you don't hear it until you, you hear it turn off. <clears throat> anyway, Kung Fu Panda 4, mixed rating of the cinema. Jack Black, Aquafina, Brian Cranston, Kihei Kwan, Viola Davis, Ian McShane, Dustin Hoffman. And, uh, all the like iconic characters from the other films, like Tigress and Madness and all that, they appear in the film, but only at the end to train Aquafina's character, and they have no voice lines. And I mean, right? I didn't actually watch Kung Fu Panda Free. It came out when I was, I think, 10 or 11. Uh, at that time, I did not like Kung Fu Panda. And I also considered myself too old for it. Um, and the last time I seen one or two were over 10 years ago. So, I watched this because I seen like an ad where they were being interviewed and um, someone said about the blend between action and comedy and I thought, you know, I love Rush R, I love Bullet Train, I'm gonna love this. And also because Puss in Boots was such a massive success that maybe they're gonna try and replicate it. You know, make Kung Fu Panda 4 in the style of Puss in Boots 2. And that's not what happened, but I, I still did quite enjoy this. Although, the reveal of Aquafina's character was really working for the chameleon, was predictable, as was her betrayal of the chameleon, and her becoming the Dragon Warrior, also predictable. Um, Ping... And Brian Cranston's characters, you know, with his dads. The side story of them going after him was a bit stupid. <coughs> there were quite some funny jokes in this, like they had a, a bull, well, bulls in a china shop. Because <laughs> they, they were chasing Poe and Zen. Um, and they go for a china shop, and they don't destroy it. Like they, they're very careful going for it. Um, there was, there was something else that was really funny, but I forget what it was. I was gonna say, oh, end credits has Jack Black singing "Hit Me Baby" one more time, and it's not like he's singing it in a funny way. Like, it's not 
I don't, I haven't listened to a lot of Tenacious D, but Tenacious D, he sings things in a funny way, like his tone, there's something about it that is funny. Whereas in this, he sings it seriously, and it works really well. Big Lizard X. Big Monkey. Uh, the New Empire. Mixed ratings. I'm oh, sorry, universally negative ratings. I watched it in the cinema. Brian Tyree Henry. Um, is this the guy from... Okay, no, it's not the guy. From... Oh, it is the guy from Bullet Train. <coughs> Every time I see this guy, I keep on thinking, am I racist? Or is that the guy from Bullet Train? Anyway, I don't think Isaac Gonzalez is in this. Nigger is Lance Reddick. I have no interest in Godzilla or Kong. Uh, the reason why I watched this is because we made a. I always, I'm just going to use the word event every single time now. You know, we got out, went, had Tim Hortons for dinner. Uh, and then we watched this and it, I enjoyed it. It was very slow though, but it's fine. Um, it doesn't really feel like Godzilla and Kong. It was more like. You have a bunch of God or you have a bunch of Kong scenes and then there's just a little bit of Godzilla. And it, it feels like you're just going back and forth between two different shows. Like say all the Kong bits were one show and the Godzilla bits were another show, you're just going back and forth in the build up to a crossover. That's what this felt like. Um, but I still did quite enjoy it. There were some. Kong was really funny in this. There's, there's a bit where he grabbed another gorilla, and just like swung him about and used him as a weapon. Uh, he acted like the Beast Titan once. He picked up a. A rock and freighted another gorilla and you know his aim was spot on. Um <coughs> wonder fan of the humans in this, especially Brian Tyree Henry. <coughs> Can't find what else to say. There was a bit where it's, it sounded like, like Kong was about to get hit and it sounded like he went, huh? Um, they, they did like WWE moves on each other, like Godzilla fighting that ice guy and or that ogre gorilla, uh, Kong fighting those, uh, I don't know anything about Mothra. I know that Mothra has been around for a while. Like, she is not new to the monster verse. Or she's not. Like, she was around before the monster verse. Um, but, like, what, what was the point in having her in this? Because all she really did was, like, basically stop Kong and Godzilla fighting. Um, they they were really good at like the CGI team. They were able to successfully like animate emotions on Kong, and I was surprised by that because there's bits like he chipped the tooth in a lot of pain, and there was a bit where him and Godzilla are seeing each other for the first time in this film, and Godzilla or Kong's basically trying to get Godzilla to go through. The portal into hollow earth and like you can 
looking at his eyes, you can tell, like, he's desperate. So, big props to them. I think that's everything I have to say.